definitely spend more time nurturing the relationships locally um, with other partner organisations, um, so thinking across health and social care, certainly now in terms of the five year forward view and the clarity that that gives us in terms of different models um, of care and provision. Um, so working much more across health and social care, looking at the um, groups that can support activity going forward, certainly thinking more about kind of assets based community development, bringing some of the locality groups into thinking about what they've got in the community that can help improve health and support commissioners to, to deliver good services. I get together a working group initially with somebody who's great at being very organised, somebody who's strong on the data, somebody with an, an involvement background and some local patients and say okay this is what we're looking to do, how are we going to do it and I'd, I'd share the work out amongst that group, do some stakeholder mapping, look at who those key contacts are in the community to help us give a, a better sort of grounding to build on. First of all, uh, patient participation is exactly what it is. You need a, a nucleus of people that are prepared to do, do stuff, not um, the death of patient participation will be when patients use the forum that they're given as a complaint board. The health centres and the hospitals they have their own complaints procedure. Patient participation isn't about listening to, to Joe moan about this or you can't park his car. That's not, a, that's not about it. Surround yourself with people that are willing to work together, decide on how you're going to work and then do not get distracted, that's the point, and you just need to be open-minded, and as the patient group grows and changes, so does the respect and the, if you like, the, uh, the not respect, it's a bad word, but so does the influence that it has on their individual practices, and you need, you need a number of things, you need willingness, and you need willingness on the side of the GPs to embrace patient participation. Listen to your patients, respond, make sure you've got a sponsor that initiates and sustains. Um, always feedback um, and engage with people the way that they want to engage. So for example, the membership um, scheme that we run have members who sign up to CCGs. CCGs quite often want to promote what's going on, but actually some of the members just want to, ha to know what's happening in their local area. So they might want to know where they can get the electric blanket tested at the local fire station. So pitch the communication and appeal to your audience and make sure you, you meet the audience. I would, I would encourage people to work with young people um, simply because it actually opens up your eyes to the fact that we're just caretakers of the here and now. We're looking after the present, but actually young people are the future and the decisions we make now is the legacy we're leaving for these people when they're 50, 60 years old. And I certainly want to be working for a service that is remembered for having done great things that actually leaves a, a positive legacy in the future. Having young people there is a really visible reminder that actually we are just caretakers, but also Young people have so much to give about their own needs. They understand what it is they need to be well, to stay well. And we forget that actually young people might be on the start of their journey, but they already have learnt a lot, they have a lot to give, and we should harness that. The big lesson that we, that we learned was that, uh, and we had a strategy uh, around this reaching joint solutions, was that the way to really change things in services and to, and to, and to get services working in the way that, that everybody thought they should work was to, uh, was to encourage collaborative framework where staff and service users worked together and developed, and developed a joint approach, a shared understanding of the, way, of the way things ought to be done. Top tips for engagement in the health system is really about fronting up and, and showing um, your personal passion and belief in the health service and if you like giving people the opportunity to, to meet you halfway and, and, and show how passionate and inspirational they can be in coming and supporting what you're doing 
Um, if you give of yourself in a way that, that, that shows that you're inspired and proud to work in the health service, it's, it's, it, it often inspires people to, to come and, and work with you and get involved. And I think if, if more of our fabulous staff across the health service can, can front up and get out and do that a little bit more often and, and show people what a fantastic job they do, then people will be inspired to get involved, to volunteer, to take part, to give their views. And I think that will, will make for better, stronger, more resilient communities ultimately. I think it's important that there's, there's, there's sign up at all levels to it. It's particularly important that commissioners uh, are not just seen to support the initiative but they, you know, they, act, they actively give up their time to, 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 to go along to the meetings, to the groups, give up the time, uh, show the commitment, walk the walk as opposed to talking the talk. I think that's, uh, that's very important but it's also important that that there's buy-in from the from the services that are, that are participating in that. So, you know, whilst it's very important that the, the staff directly working with service users and the service users are, are jointly involved, it's also important that those organisations, that those services sit in, have senior buy-in. And I think if the commissioners don't buy into that, neither will the senior staff.